Tonight we're going to look at a Uniden Bearcat 680 and I am not familiar with this radio at all. I never even knew this type of rig actually existed. It looks like it's got bird poop on it. That's kind of weird. I think it does. Anyway, uh, this was given to one of my sons by a uh, guy up the street and he kind of knew that we were into this type of stuff and uh, they were just going to chuck it because it didn't work. Bird poop and all, that's kind of disgusting. Anyway, so I've got the uh, unit in Bearcat mic. These things are evil. And I can see this right off, this jinky mic cord. So what I have is I am going to, in fact, I don't know when these are even have, were even made. I'm gonna assume or take a guess that this is like uh, early 2000s. Is there a date code on the back? No, this thing's just, anyway, let's put some power to it and see if she flies. All right. All right, so we're on uh, channel 19. Apparently that was interesting. I'm not sure if this is a trucker's radio or not. I've got the volume up all the way. Squelch is all the way counterclockwise. That That's disgusting. Anyway, on the front here, we have channel nine and 19 switch. Was it in an emergency mode? No, okay. Right. All right. Let's go to let's go to our home channel. All right. Local distance. So that's kind of like our RF gain, right? PACB. We're on CB right now. It looks like. Let's see if we can read that. Um, A and L noise blanker. Are they independent? No, they are together. So it's either off or A and L noise blanker together. High low. Uh, oh, that's for the mics, maybe? Okay, I was thinking maybe this was is receive tone, but anyway. It looks like it's mic high. And then dim bright. So that's pretty cool. And then, of course, 40 channels. Yeah, I should have worn my gloves. All right. So we're on tw 23. So I have no audio, no receive audio. Does it key? Doesn't look like it keys up either. So I'm not really sure what's going on. Let's try a external speaker. Uh, try that. And nothing there. So let me, um, I'm gonna stop the camera real quick and grab a, uh, President stock mic. Yeah, we'll do that. Actually, I don't have a President stock mic available at the moment, so I'll use this uh, President Bluetooth mic. Because power off. Okay. Because I'm going to assume because of this, and these 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 mics are whacked. Anyway, so let's see what happens. Oh wow, nothing. Do I, can I get power to that? Yes, I can. Now it's in PA mode. Let's go. Ah, there we go. Okay, so let's do this. Let's plug the mic back in. Okay, we're working now. But look, still not transmitting. Got receive again. We got transmit. So it's putting out power. I see on my uh, meter there. So let's throw this on the dummy load. Standby. Okay, so I have the radio on the dummy load and the meter here. Let's see if I can get this over here. Here we go. We do that safely. All right, there we go. The old trusty Royce 097 see if we can zoom in on this a little bit there we go try to focus on that see if we can get some better light how about that there we go okay so we are on AM obviously because we don't have FM right ah, this is just AM only and we are on 23 so let's run up to 23 nothing but the best here okay let's key this up well, look at that. We have over four watts. 
Now I'm on a dummy load and I've got like a one-to-one -one SWR, so. That's pretty healthy, healthy actually. actually. Okay, so I'm using the, uh, my ever trusty President Randy, two FCC. <clears throat> that thing is nice to have around the bench. All right, let's do this again. Hello, Hello one, one, two, two three. three, one, two, three. three. Radio. Radio. Okay, so it works. Let's uh, do this. Let's uh, see what we can do. I need to service this meter. Oh, that was SWR. Well, let's go with modulation. There we go. It's being nice. That's been jumpy lately. Okay, so modulation set, modulation here. Now, this isn't scientific, right? This is just just kind of to get to give us an idea. Hello, Hello radio, radio one, one, two, three. three. Hello, radio. So my meter says 40% modulation with, uh, hello, hello. Like peaks of like 80. Actually, I'm going to go grab a Digimic and see if we can improve that. Hold on. This is one of my favorite microphones for President Gear. Looks a little like that. All right. Disconnected. All right. Let's see. Let's see if we improved anything there. Hello, radio. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right. That brought it up quite a bit. Hello. Hello. We have a better, uh, a better attitude on that forward swing. I really like that. And in the uh, monitor, it seems to sound better. Now I'm on the external speaker and as you can probably hear, it is a little noisy when I unkey. That may be a characteristic of that radio. Let's, there we go. Let's unplug that. And let's see here. Hello, one, two, three. Hello, one, two, three. Okay. Now I'm losing audio here. Okay. So I've got this turned up all the way. You know, I just unplugged that mic or that uh, sort of speaker, didn't I? Let's work that a couple times. Hold on. Let's work that a couple times. <sighs> doesn't like that at all. We've got problems here. Okay. Hello, hello. Hello, radio. Hello, radio. Okay. Let's go back to the other one. I don't know what that, why that would make a difference. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. And it did not. And as you can see, I've got this volume up all the way. So this should, this should be giving me feedback. We're in DX mode, so that's full uh, RF gain up all the way, basically, CB, a and uh, and all of that. And um, so what we're going to have to do is uh, break into this thing and see what's going on. Okay, so I had to uh, retrieve a few tools and a little, uh, make up a little piece of test equipment. So I've got the volume up all the way. I have a... PL259 with just the center post stabbed in there real quick. I guess I could have used a signal generator, but I'm just looking for static. So I want to see if the speaker is getting any signal. So let's try this. Okay, I have nothing here. And what I'm doing here is basically I've just got this little jig made up here uh this goes to my external speaker um however while i was getting stuff together now i could take a little one point uh, uh 1.5 volt battery and pop that speaker i would just desolder the speaker lead here and just stick that little battery across there uh it's pretty rare that you lose a speaker and maybe that's what i'll do but i just saw something here that kind of alerted me to a possible problem and this is pretty common. This radio has been through a lot. It's got a lot of grime down in here. Um, pretty interesting. So yeah, so there we go. So here's, here's what we've got. I just plugged my external speaker into the external speaker jack. Okay, so it works. One, two, three, one, two, three. Okay, sounds pretty good actually. So, um, Let's see here. Let's unplug this. Let's unplug this speaker. I don't want to let the smoke out. Not yet, boys. 
Uh, let's unplug this speaker here. And I want to show you guys this. Let's see, we'll just take all this stuff out and try to get it up to the camera, try to get some light in there. Anyway, I don't know if you guys can see down in here, but these are corroded really bad. So I think what I'm going to do next is I'm going to pull the part out and I'll uh, see if I can uh, clean it up a little bit or I'll look through the bin and see if I have a replacement. But that's what it is. That's why we don't have audio. So that's pretty good. It's just all tarnished, corroded, whatever you want to call it down in there. And so both of them. I mean, the PA one, I'm not going to worry too much about that, but we'll try it later on. So this radio really has not much in the way of modifications. Just for giggles, I was looking around in there and I found something to adjust the uh, S meter and the squelch. But other than that, there's nothing. I know nothing about these chassis. I didn't even know this, this radio even existed. So um, she's kind of been through a little something the the bottom plate didn't fit on right this is not right it, it's had its share of abuse but uh anyway so that's what we're going to do we're going to heat up the soldering pan and yard that piece out and see if we can get that uh, fixed so that'll be in the next shot okay so i've got this out of the chassis but i wanted to show you guys all of the discoloring here now this i've seen this before where it won't allow it to make the connection. So you get in there and do that and you can get it to make the connection. However, and I don't know if you can see in this light, I thought that was corroded and it is, it's discolored, but I don't know if you can see there, I'm gonna to try to get this in the camera, but here's the deal. It wasn't making Let's see, it wasn't making connection. Try to get up here. I don't know, it might be blurry. Come on, camera. That little leaf right there doesn't want to join. So, yeah, it's it's hard to tell until you get your till you till you get right in there. But I thought that was a corrosion issue. I saw this this action right here this has got some sort of stuff on it that's it can be scraped off but anyway we need to clean that and then possibly adjust this or this and i've had somewhat limited luck so what i'll usually do is on something like this with this is with stereo equipment not really cb so anyway what i'll do is i'll push this down to break that connection so i'll get in there i'll push that down and then i'll take another tool and I'll push that up to kind of give it give it that spring it's going to need to make that connection so I'm going to do that and uh, clean this up and we'll come back and then reinstall it in the radio and see if it's a go if it's a go let's finish up this little radio ship it get it out of here okay so I soaked it in uh, vinegar for a few minutes I was getting some refreshments and uh she cleaned up real nice. I'm happy with that. Then I took then I took and, and held it in this hand and I pushed I used my needle nose to push that down and then I took this to bend that up like that. See? So you know, the more I think about it, um, not only it being dirty, but I mean, I've seen these jacks. They get, if this if this was in a, uh, a trucker's, uh, if this was like a trucker's radio or something like that, or somebody was just really careless jamming external speaker uh, jack in there, you know, that could have done it. I mean, who knows? It really it could have been from the factory just barely touching. So who knows? So that being said, let's check for continuity. And then we'll put this puppy back in. Okay, so we have continuity. But uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go off here a little bit. 
There we go. We're gonna just see if it'll work right. It still works. Okay, so I call this success. And uh, I think that looks a lot better. And we are ready to reinstall. So let's get her in there. Yeah, one last thing I wanted to show you. I also did this. This is some uh, thousand grit wet dry. And uh, I went and I pushed that down. I've got it folded over a couple times. I need an overhead camera. Anyway, I'll set something like that up maybe. And then just did that. Okay, and we're getting stuff off. And when I uh, pulled it out there, I got a nice positive click. So we're in good shape. It's cleaned and ready to roll. All right, so we've got the uh, external speaker jack reinstalled, cleaned up. She looks good, almost new. Much, much better than new, Mr. Bombardier. And uh, let's see, the, the power uh, plug assembly back in, speakers on, or plugged in, I should say. And uh, let's see here, we're gonna call this the bird poop special. So let's turn on the old bird poop special here. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Uh, does this have auto squelch? I forget, not really sure. Anyway, let's see here. Go back to the old bench radio here. There we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So we got it. We're looking good. All right. So um, the board was the board was uh, silk screened 2011, and I really. You know, there's really no adjustments. There might be some sort of a special secret uh, menu or something for this. I'm not really sure. Again, I know nothing about these radios. First time I've ever seen one of these. There's a squelch adjust and a meter adjust, but nothing else. There's really not much you can do in the way of modification unless you just want to throw the thing all out of whack and whatnot. But other than that, I see nothing. So, uh, at this point, I know it puts out good power. So, at this point, I think what I'm going to do is we are just going to uh, pull the face off and uh, clean it up. All right. So, uh, the 680 is back together. She's cleaned up. You can actually touch the thing now. It's not all disgusting. Got the bird poop off of everything. And, uh, you know, the insides of this radio had like a weird kind of... Um, like a dirt in it, uh, like uh, black crusty stuff. It kind of reminds me uh, my, uh, when my uncle, when I was a kid, my uncle had a, a machine shop and he also had a saw sharpening uh, room that, that was part of what they used to do. They would uh, sharpen different kinds of saw blades and chainsaw chains and all that kind of stuff. And that black grit is like what I found in the radio. That's yeah, pretty interesting. So anyway, I don't know. Um, it's kind of had a hard life. But anyway, so I cleaned up all the inside. Everything's back together now. Cleaned up the lids. Uh, got the uh, got everything off. Pulled the face off. Got inside behind the glass. And uh, she looks 100% better. And it's not disgusting anymore. So let's turn it on. And we're in DX here. Local. Oh, okay, that's right, that's right. There we go, turn on some uh, noise blanker. Still pretty noisy, but uh, not bad. Sure to be just fine for a mobile. Yeah, you can cut it down. And this is about what I have. This is what I have uh, today. Um, is about five S units of noise, power line noise. It's about 100 degrees here, almost 100 degrees in Salt Lake in the middle of the day. We've got a lot of power line noise. So uh, let's, uh, let's see how it works. Squelch works. We already know that our other functions here work. So let's try this on the old test piece here. So let's give it some volume. 
And I'm firing into this little roll of tape here, so it's probably not going to sound all that good. Hello, radio, one, two, three. One, two, three. I don't have one of those professional technician uh, ham radio, uh, CB radio repair pucks. So, blue tape to the rescue. Blue tape to the rescue. Copy, copy, copy. Sounds, you know, it's got a pretty decent receiver in it. Let's check adjacent channel rejection just for giggles. Hello, radio. One, two, three. One, two, three. Yeah, I get a little bit of bleed over. But that's all right. One, two, three. One, two, three. All right, we got the walkie going. I'm using the Digimic. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three. Hello, radio, one, two, three. The old digital mic. That is cool. Always that delay with them digital mics. Always that little bit of delay. Hello, radio, one, two, three, one, two, three. All right, and then let's... Um, makes a weird unkeying noise, doesn't it? That's kind of weird. Let's go to the Bluetooth microphone. I like using this in on the base station. Um... This is a kind of a nice setup to have because then I can just kind of just leave this on the table and pretty much whenever, wherever I am here in the workroom, um, I, oh, I got to turn it on, eh? Come on, let it pair. Come on. There we go. Okay, test one, two, one, two, one, two, three, four. And this works out really good because you can just kind of hold this thing while you're working on stuff. Um, or maybe put it on an armband if you want to get really cool with it. But, uh, anyway, and then as long, you know, it doesn't transmit audio back to the microphone itself. So as long as you're in the same vicinity of the radio and you can hear the sound coming out from the radio, whether it's an external speaker or the internal speaker in the radio, um, this will work really good. One, two, three, one, two, three. All right. And then, uh, one final note. This microphone that came with it is pretty hammered, so I'm not sure if I'm going to fix that or not. I don't know. If I decide to, I'll put it down in the description box. So anyway, there you go. The Uniden Bearcat 680, the old bird poop special here. And uh, we saved another radio uh, from the landfill. And that's kind of really what it's about. I'm not really into like these kind of radios, but we, we did. We saved it... Uh, from going in the landfill. It didn't need to go into the landfill. Just uh, had a jinky uh, external speaker jack back there. So, yeah, that's pretty cool. It's an interesting radio. For sure. Anyway, a lot better. Looking good. Um, I use the Meguiar's. This is what I like to use on the fronts. And we got the display looking really good. Buffed out a lot of scratches here. And, of course, it just kind of brought the front back to life. I mean, it's not perfect. But it's uh, considerably better than what it was when it came in. Got a deep nick in there. Got one in there, too. But, uh, anyway, I, I used the scratch out on both sides of the screen. And... Um, Looks pretty good. I think it looks a lot better. Sorry this was such a long video, guys. All right, take care. Cheers. Everybody have a good one. Stay tuned. Maybe we'll use this for a, a prize giveaway or something like, uh, I don't know, some sort of a prize drawing? I don't know. You guys tell me. Leave questions or comments down below. Thanks for watching. Bye.